Welcome to the OrientDB Getting Started training. This section covers the ETL module introduced with OrientDB 2.0. What exactly is ETL? The acronym stands for Extract, Transform, Load. This is a tool allowing you to pull data from a variety of sources, make transformations in a consistent and predictable way, and then load them into OrientDB or pipe them to another application. The system revolves around JSON files that you define. This is an example of an ETL description for connecting with a MySQL database and pulling the data into OrientDB. There are many options we won't be able to cover in this session, so you can refer to our documentation to understand all the options available to you. It's helpful to understand the major components. First you have the concept of blocks. These sections in the JSON allow you to execute code assign variable values, and other actions. The next concept is sources. Currently you have the choice of the file system, terminal input, maybe piping data into the tool, and HTTP for things like REST services hosted remotely. There are currently three extractors, row for CSV and tab delimited type files, JDBC to pull directly from another database, and JSON which makes it very simple to work with data from a JSON file or REST service. Transformers are a middle layer allowing you to massage and prepare the data prior to insertion into OrientDB or outputting to the console with a loader. Let's jump into a live demo working with the ETL tool. Let's take a quick look at some examples with this ETL tool. I have my OrientDB distribution folder here just so you can see the directories that I'm working with. Uh, in the bin directory you'll notice the oetl.sh file. This is the file we'll use to execute our ETL commands. I also have two files in here, a demo for CSV and we'll be doing a REST demo. And then there's the people.csv which we'll be using as our data source for the CSV example. Inside of databases we have two databases we'll be creating a new database in our first example here. One thing I'd want you to notice is that OrientDB server is not running at this point. So let's take a look at our specification files. First we have our people.csv. You can see I have a header row specifying the names of the fields and then the data following that. It's just random data of people names and their age. In our CSV ETL description we have some JSON and I'll walk through this quickly. The highlights are we have a source and we're going to be using a file, so a physical file in the file system. You can see I've specified a relative path based on the bin directory. So I'll go to the parent directory and grab that people.csv file. The extractor for CSV is row, so this is correct. We have a couple transformers. The CSV transformer, which we're specifying our separator and delimiters and then we're going to be placing the data into a vertex with the class V. In the loader we're going to be connecting with the plocal mechanism and again I've specified a relative path to the database. You notice that this does not exist at this point. So we've specified our login credentials and then we've also specified DB auto create to true. So if it does not find the database it will create it. So let's go ahead and run this example go back to the terminal and we'll go to our desktop which is where our OrientDB distribution is and we'll go to the bin directory. We'll do dot slash oetl.sh and we're going to pass in the path to our CSV JSON file. So dot dot slash etl demo csv dot json and you'll see it executes through. It gives you a summary of what it's doing. You can see IDs were made for each of the entries. There was 100 names in there, or I guess 101. So let's make sure that this worked. And remember, this was with plocal, so the server was not even running. Let's do a new tab and dot slash server dot sh. We'll get OrientDB server up and running. And we'll go to studio. So I'll go to localhost 2480. You can see that an ETL database was created and that can also be verified here in the finder. So there's our ETL demo database. And let's log in. And 
and let's choose select from V. This will give us all the records from V and you can see that the names were added into the V class and we've successfully imported the data. So let's go a little bit further with this. I'll go back to the file and we're going to make some edits here. First thing we'll do rather than inserting directly into V is we'll insert into a class person. This class is not defined in the schema yet. It will be created during the operation. Next thing we'll change is we're going to actually connect using the remote method. So put remote, put in localhost, same database, and let's give this a try. I'll save, go back to the command line, up arrow, and we'll do the exact same command. Let's go back to studio. We'll update the limit to 200, and we'll change to person. And you'll see that we now have people with the names, and it worked through the remote connection mechanism. Let's clear this all out, and we'll do a REST example. Delete from V. That will give us an empty database, and we'll go back to our code files. So let's take a look at the REST demo. Much the same, but a little bit different. We're using a different source. This time we're going to use the HTTP source. And all of your different options are available in our documentation. But we're specifying a URL. So if we take this URL, go to the browser, you can see that we have a little REST service here that's serving up some names, three names. We're going to use the get method. We're using the extractor JSON because it's JSON data. And we're doing one transformer and just putting it into a class rest person. We're using the remote connection method to the same ETL demo. So let's save this and let's run it in the console. Instead of CSV demo, we'll do rest.json. And you can see that the records were imported. Let's go to Studio, just verify where we're at, select from V. You can see that we have a class, REST person, and that the information was imported from the REST interface. Back in the console, let's run the exact same command again and go to Studio and run the exact same select from V. And now we have six records, so we're getting duplicates. So let's fix that. We'll go into our code and we'll use a transformer to do it. We'll add to our JSON array a merge transformer. And we'll specify a join field name. And we'll use the ID field from the REST JSON. Then we'll specify the lookup to compare it to in OrientDB. and it's going to be rust person dot id. So we'll save this, go back to the console. Now let's run again. You can see here that it's giving us repeat IDs, but we'll verify it in Studio. Let's go again with select from V, and you can see we only have six records now. So this is just a very tiny example of what you can do with the ETL tool. I'd recommend you go to the documentation there's all kinds of information on working with the ETL and its different components. You've got the configuration, sources, extractors, transformers, loaders, and some examples of working with different types of data. This is a new feature that was added for OrientDB 2.0, and we know you'll come up with some innovative solutions utilizing it.